Well, the reason why we have GMOs, even though people don't want them, is money and politics. That our system is different than European system. You've seen that in England. You know they have like six weeks presidential campaign. We have like nonstop. You know, as soon as we have election, they start doing, and to get the money out of politics because we do have this kind of institutionalized bribery in this country where you get what you pay for. You know, you pay you support. You know, not to get GMOs labeled, even though most people want to lab label. You know, you get a totally lame ass labeling thing, which is, you know, stupid. So I think that, that that's the difference between this system and Europe is, is all the money that's in politics. So that's a problem and that has to change and that would be, there are all kinds of problems because of the money in politics. We all know that now. You know, we know it's, it's basically bought. You know, they, they bought themselves these, this, um, you know, this being able to take over agricultural system with, with pest, these pesticide regimes. So I think that, you know, Europe, they have this thing, they, they've opted out. You know, they, the, most of the countries in the EU have opted out, so they won't grow GMOs there. Some of them do import GMOs in animal feed, but you can't find it. You can't find uh, GMOs. Most, you know, there's just very few. You can, you can import a GMO food to Europe, but nobody buys it, so they don't bother to import it. In fact, you know, cornflakes here are probably made with GMO corn, but they're not made with GMO corn in, in you know, the same companies ship, you know, they, they make cornflakes without GMO corn. So, and, and some countries, some uh, companies in this country have started, re have removed GMOs from their food because they know that's what customers want. But I think that, um, you know, that, that's the big challenge in this country is how do people get back their voice? you know, and, and, and really be able to change the food system and all kinds of other systems um, to the way that we want it. And we have these problems in this country, like the Gates Foundation is very aggressively trying to shove GMOs down the world's throat, in Africa's throat, even though they don't want it. And I just don't know why they can't understand that, you know, they're techophiles, you know, they're techies, and we just want the latest. I don't think they understand agriculture. And they, they want this monoculture, you know, they want to control it. And they say they're helping, but they're not helping. They're not helping. They're, they're not helping farmers, you know, by, by letting them Monsanto, the whole Monsanto chemical regime come and take over. And a lot of their miracle GMO crops haven't worked out. They don't have a GMO uh, a crop that resists drought. They have, uh, they have crop, they have, uh, Non, they have non-GMO, I think it's wheat, what is it, something, corn, that resists drought. And, and so we can do much better things not using GMOs than if we use GMOs, actually more successful. We don't have a non-GMO drought resistant. We don't have, you know, these things, they have, it hasn't panned out. Golden rice, you know, the golden rice, it doesn't even work. They haven't even had anything they can properly test. So it's, um, you know, I think that grassroots is very, very important, and the whole food thing now is, has been very grassroots now for how many years? Not even that long, 15 years, 12 years. You know, it's a huge movement towards people wanting to know what's in their food, where did it come from, who grew it. You know, all these young people want to be farmers. There's all these artisan things, and it's happening all over the country. It's not just happening on the coast. It's happening in you know, everywhere, because I've gone to these places. You know, I've gone to, you know, Minnesota, and I've gone to, you know, and they show my films in these places, because they, you know, call us up and they, we want to show it to our community garden, so, all over the place. So, you know, and also the other interesting thing is, is Symphony of the Soil, which is for, you know, it's basically, it's not only about organic agriculture, but I believe that organic agriculture is healthier for the soil. So naturally, if you're going to understand how soil works, you don't really want to kill it. You know, it's alive. You don't want to kill it with or deform it with pesticides or too much fertilizer and you know all these kinds of things. But it's been, you know, I've sold more. So the way films work is that you, if you sell it to a school for them to show to classes, you get a premium. You get like two or three hundred dollars for that because they're going to use it year after year. And the the two places where universities all over the state have bought my film the most are Iowa and Texas. 
I mean, many universities and colleges in each of those states have bought this film to use in their classes. And it, I just love that because you think, well, you know, that seems like they wouldn't really, but they love it. And I've been to Iowa, you know, five times showing my work. So it's just been um, very heartening to see that there is something instinctive in humans that want healthy food. You know, I think, I think we have that. And when that's presented as an alternative, like think about what you're eating and become soil conscious and food conscious, what, what we can do anything we want, what, can, what will we do? You know, and what you want is you want healthy food that's grown in healthy soil, that creates a healthy community and brings farmers, people back to the land instead of pushing them off the land and just sort of, sort of, it's not like we're turning back the clock, but we're moving towards a healthier society where um, everyone has a stake in the future. You know, where what do we want our future to be like? We don't want a future with toxic soil uh, that's not even soil anymore because it's degraded so much and eroded so much that all we have left is this inert sort of substance that we're pouring chemicals into and pulling products out of. So I think that there is this huge shift going on in this country uh, in the people, you know, in people. And I think that the, the challenge is to really make our government responsive to that. Um, because that, that is the challenge, and we know that. But I do think that, um, the, 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 that we are ready for that change, and we've done it on grassroots. We've done it all over the place on grass, in a grassroots level, and I think now we need to, 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 to push those grassroots up, and so we also get help from top down, because we need both of those. We can't just keep doing it on our own if, if we're not going to get any help, if the government is actually working against us. You know, so I feel kind of positive about the future, but I think that um, you know we all have to make a serious commitment to informing ourselves and the people around us and our families about uh, what the I think the healthier way to go is, and, and and take those actions. And I think that's happening, and it's 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 uh, wonderful because it's supportive. You know, you feel part of a community when you're at a farmer's market. You feel part of a community when you're when you go visit the farm that you buy your food from and, and even political action meetings and things like that. So it helps grow communities too.